But at the end of the day, we've got it really good here. I wake up every day like grateful that I was born in Canada. I tell my kids every single day that this it's literally the best country to be born in in the world. There isn't a better country to be born in. Canada is a huge resource. We've got a lot of land. We've got a lot of opportunity. We've got a, a, a stable environment. It's so crazy when people start talking about Canada, how lousy it is here. And then you just go and you just like travel. You know, most of those people don't travel. Most of those people don't talk to other people in the world. And you just hear the perspective of what other people's lives are in all these other countries, like including the United States and just how much better we have it here in Canada. It's a safe haven for people to come and live in. But the people who complain are usually the people who were born and raised here, who've lived here their whole lives, who are privileged, and who want to be able to just complain about anything. And they'd be complaining about the same things and doesn't matter what country they live in. And so it's really easy to pick on the government or our systems or our school systems or our healthcare or the weather or immigration or any of those type of things. But at the end of the day, we've got it really good here. I wake up every day like grateful that I was born in Canada. I tell my kids every single day that this it's literally the best country to be born in in the world. There isn't a better country to be born in. There isn't. You can you can you can do a test a test and ask any other person in the world all these uh, questions about you know what lifestyle is like, food, water, healthcare, education, uh, opportunity to buy real estate, and Canada is by far the best country in the world to live in in every single standard. That's why people want to move here, right? I don't so, know if it's again, number one, but it's got some good things well, going for it, for it's sure. by far the best country to be born in, in, in Canada, in, uh, in the world, for sure. It, I, th I think, but I, like, I know uh, there's a lot of people, including myself, that depending on when you were born into this country, it doesn't really seem like it's the same place anymore. And yeah, it might be great. And it might be better than a lot of other places. But it could be greater, right? And I think we've seen like this regression of the country when we should be flourishing. And I've said it before, like, why are we not like Dubai here? We have every resource under the sun, right? Whether it's lobsters or oil. Make up without having to cover their entire body or have the rights to be able to send their girls to certain schools. Not that that's part of Dubai. Like, like just, just the like, extraordinary I mean. so wealth between us and any other country. And that the only people who can, who complain about Canada are the ones who just don't really have the perspective that, you know, is necessary to be able to, you know, feel good about your life every single day. Right. Hmm. So these are the things that are important. Right. And so investing in Canada, I think there's a ton of people. I'm super bullish on the Canadian real estate market. I don't care what anybody talks about interest rates the interest rates were 20% at one point in the 80s and people weathered the storm. Right now we're using 60% of our income. Watch, I guarantee Canadians will weather this storm. They will cut back on their expenses. They'll do whatever it takes to put every single dollar they need to to pay those interest payments every single month so that they don't lose their homes, so that they do get to live in it for a little bit longer. So they extend their amortization, so they own their home for a little bit longer, whatever it is. They'll do whatever is necessary to keep the roof over their head because that's built into Canadian culture. We won't lose our homes. We'll, we'll lose everything before we have to lose our home because it's an embarrassment to lose your home. And so you'll do anything you can to, to fight for that. And we'll weather this storm to get through it until rates will go down. 100% rates are going to go back down. There's no way that rates are going to stay the way that they are forever. Will they go back down to zero, you know, 20, 25 basis points uh, overnight rate? Probably not. But what happens? What happens when you lower those rates? And like a can of Coke is going to be 50 bucks before you know it. Those are other what factors. That? That's a very naive thing. And, and, and anybody who's talking about inflation strictly because of interest rates, we've been trying to create inflation for a long time because deflation is actually an issue that is, is, is a lot bigger than what we've been used to. So the whole cost of a can of Coke or food and all that, those all came from other sources because we had a lot of uh, outsourcing and uh, supply chain issues. And then, of course, the grocery companies, they all got greedy. They saw what opportunities they had. I mean, we, we kept on talking about the cost of gas going up. That's why our food and, and um, uh, materials and, and goods and service goods were all getting uh, overpriced. Like, comment, and subscribe if you got anything from one of these clips. And if you want to see some more, press something on the screen here. Boom. That was good. That was, that was good. good. That was good. I like that. That was good.